so the chip is out of the oven. Clamp is just holding. Yeah, you can go ahead and take it out. The clamp is just holding the chips together. And then you want to use the forceps to take out both of them. So you don't want to undo it on the clamp, right? You will undo it in the in the tube unless it comes off easily. go in all the way that's okay but see if you can uh, pop it open now I'm just gonna separate the two there you go okay then you want that one yeah okay yeah that's perfect okay and I can remove the gasket now yeah or you can leave it in there it's okay you leave it there okay yep and then we'll put the other one in wash one It's got a little bit of soap in it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to handle that, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. So you just invert it uh, about a minute or so. It doesn't take a whole lot. And then we'll move over to uh, the the, under the hood. Bottle. Yeah, and then we'll put it in the tube and the, the seal line trail. Just go in. Yeah. Okay. It was great. Sonny, can you bring that stand in which it was kept? Oh, you can see right here. Alright. Alright, so now we need to transfer it to... Yeah, 2 is in here. Yeah. It's heating. So, so wash buffer 2 is around 35 degrees or so. Yeah, yeah you can put it on the side actually. Second wash? Yeah. attached to the microchip, right? And you go through various solutions. Some solutions are um, have various concentrations of salts and soap, so to speak. And you usually start with a uh, more s s salty solution and work your way down to a less salty solution. And again, this helps to remove more and more unattached labeled samples. Hopefully you have a lot of attached. And, uh, and actually the low salt uh, washes are more stringent than the higher salt washes. Which means? Which means you'll get off hopefully as much of the unbound as you can compared to the previous wash one. And also what we're doing wash two is uh, heated up to about 35 degrees Celsius which we thought was Technique isn't that difficult. Um, so are we on the last wash cycle and then we're going to dip it? Okay, just let it dry. Okay. 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 Okay.
Is that the last flashlight? Yes. Uh, it's and then these are your. You have your acetyl nitrile and uh, the drying solution right here. Yeah. So I think we have the drying solutions over here. So there's acetyl nitrile first and then acetyl solution. Okay. So this is acetyl nitrile. Oh, this. Well. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, do you remember why we need to use? Do you understand, or do you remember why we need to use the, what the benefit of the drying solution is? Uh, it yeah, places a coat over it so that we can just uh, see it, like when we scan it again and again, it doesn't clear up everything. Yeah, and also um, it protects it from ozone. The, the red dye is very, very sensitive to ozone. Mm -hmm. So it helps protect against that and probably might help reduce photo oxidation from the scanner when it's shining lasers on it too. So you kind of, but when the ozone is really high, you can lose red signal very easily, while the green signal is still pretty. But we've literally seen this, the red spots disappear just because of the ozone. So it's, anyway, um, so this was where your chip was. Yes, I thought acetonitrile was for protection from ozone. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But the drying solution drying makes a coat of it. Makes a coat of it. So it kind of helps. Yeah, that's what you said that you that is a very slow step so that we can have a coat and it doesn't Yeah. This isn't really that difficult. Um, but um, the main thing is just that the solution is warm for the drying solution that comes from Agilent. And here we are dipping it in uh, acetyl nitrile and that's gonna really dry it out. And now we're going to put it into this drying solution from Agilent. And I'm just, all, the main thing is just to do it really, really slow so that it makes a really thin coat. If you do it real fast or if it was cold, you can actually get a really thick smear of this drying solution and then it would be hard to see your spots. So it's not a real magical technique I have. It's just going slow and having the temperature warm. That's probably the key. So now we have a perfectly dry chip that's now ready to scan. And, uh, anyway. yeah. Yeah. and we're going to see that on the scanner in a second. And so, go ahead and, Bruce, go ahead and put it in. I don't know how to do it. So we're just going to put it in. Agilent, the word Agilent in this particular chip was facing down. And I'm going to close it. And, um, Rishi, go ahead and have a seat. Now, once you hit the preview okay. mode. And then I want you to hit this blue box that kind of represents the, the PMT gain and all yeah. those things. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, right now, the, go ahead and push that button up all the way to the top. Which one? Uh, the, you know, those arrows. These ones? Yeah. Take it all the way as high as it will go. That's all. Okay, is that as far as it will go? <laughs> the last chip you did. <laughs> Now, the idea is on a genomic level that the colors will be yellow. Mm -hmm. You guys remember why that is? Yeah, because, because of the combination yeah. of red and green. And green. the expression yeah. level is the same in both cases. Overall. Overall, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But individual genes may be different. So we're expecting most of the genes expression on the genomic scale to be the same. So now, but anyway, this is a really beautiful chip, a lot nicer than the chip we did. Um, you did the other day. It's easier to reduce the detector than it is to raise the sensitivity because this is at the highest sensitivity right now for the PMT detectors. We can't change the laser intensities on this particular scanner. We can do so, we can, but we can change the detector to be more less sensitive. And so this is perfectly ideal. It might even be fun to go back and check your numbers about what you, how much RNA you put on. And this will give you an idea of what the, the limit is, or if a good chip. So here's the green coming yeah. in. 
That's beautiful. Yeah. Never been to see how there's green exactly. spots. So here's green spots and red spots, <laughs> and then yellow spots. Yeah. And even that here, you might be able to increase the green a little bit if you wanted to, just because the overall feeling of the image is yellow, mm -hmm. or I mean red. So I'm just going to increase the green just a little bit. Like I said, usually green shows up more easily. Right, then red. So that's usually so that's why the detector is so much lower. Now this is now this is probably closer to what you have an equal amount of each. See, so I'm going to actually stop it again and rescan it because I think this is set better. You might even maybe just lower the tech green just a, a hair. Okay. Anyway, that is basically in a nutshell how you wash the chip and. You've already seen in the previous video how we scan it, and so that's how these connect. And um, in a later video, I'll show you how to um, put the circles or map out all these different spots. Because you, you have to basically inventory 44,000 spots, yeah. and then be able to do statistics on it. And so you need to know what each one of those 44,000 spots represents in regards to different genes or little sequences of a gene. Anyway, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.